Hi everyone, welcome back to FRMD. So a lot of you guys have asked me about how I study in med school and I wanted to do a little maybe two part series on how I do that. So during this video, I'll be talking about the tools that I use to study during preclinical. So I think the most important thing that you can do in terms of staying on top of your studying for preclinical is making sure that you stay on top of the lectures. So personally, I was a lecture goer, so I went to all the lectures in person, but I know a lot of people, actually probably most of my class did not attend classes in person. For me, I thought it was important to attend classes in person because it helped me to stay on top of the material, but other people learn differently. So in place of attending class in person, they would watch the videos later and they would watch them at two times the speed just to get through the lectures quicker. Firstly, I didn't really do that until the neurology uh, block that I w went to classes and rewatched the lectures just because the material was so far hard for me to understand. But I think one of the most important things for yeah studying can just be staying on top of the lectures because uh, some people describe med school as a stack of pancakes where you know you have three pancakes for the day. Uh, you don't have to eat all three pancakes that day, but it is important to know that you're going to get another three pancakes the next day. So making sure you keep on top of the material is really important. In addition to lecture, how I, I chose to, to organize the lecture material I'm, I'm going to show you here is I would use OneNote and for every module we had, I would go in and I would uh, turn the uh, lecture PowerPoint into a PDF and then upload it into OneNote. And then from OneNote, I would take notes on the specific lecture as it was going. I, this this uh, style also works if you're watching it at 2x or not live. You can just take notes as the lecture is playing. What I did is I had, for the few lectures that I did watch, you know, rewatch or watch at home, I had an iPad so I could pull up the uh, material on there, the actual lecture, and then I could take notes on my OneNote. But sometimes if I didn't have my iPad with me, I would just have half the screen be the lecture and the other half be OneNote. In addition to using OneNote, what I also did was I used Anki. So Anki is a flash card deck software that is pretty popular, especially in medical school. Anki is really great because there's sometimes are pre-made decks for specific topics. So for example, anatomy, there's a bunch of pre-made decks for that, specifically the netters anatomy uh, material so you can go through and uh, go through material like that. What I like to do is I like to make my own flashcards for each specific uh, test. So what I would do is I would, for all the lectures for that specific exams, I would make flashcards for each of the lectures and then put them in and then the week before the exam or like I would try to finish maybe two days before the exam and then spend the last two days going over the flashcards. Just for me, that's how I helped consolidate information. If you don't like doing Anki, some people think it's complicated. There's also a Quizlet. In addition to those uh, resources, um, there's a couple other. So there's Boards and Beyond, which I didn't use per se, but I know other people watched. Um, Online MedEd is a godsend, uh, even for, uh, it's helpful in the clinical years, but during the preclinical years, there's also a lot of different videos that can help you through specific topics as well. Um, osmosis was also very useful. You can either get an individual membership or some schools have uh, institutional memberships that they purchased. There are also pre-made resources that people have, have made in the past. So for example, Sketchy is a very popular one, both for microbiology and pharmacology. I'm pretty sure it's a paid membership, but if you were to split it with a bunch of your classmates, it would be pretty affordable. That leads me to the last resource, which is your classmates. I think for me, especially as I got closer to the end of preclinical, I had less and less energy to make my own resources. So I, I relied uh, somewhat on some some of the other resources that my classmates had made, both in my year, but in the years above. So I think if you're ever struggling, it's really a good time to like reach out to either upper years or your other classmates, you know, ask in your, your group chats to see what other people have done. And for the most part, um, at least at my med school, people are pretty willing to share resources. It's also important to just reach out to your professors if you have any 
specific questions or uh, information that you're not understanding. They can serve as a resource for you if you need additional help and it is never a bad thing to ask for more help. Let me know what you think of this video. I'll probably be updating it to do a little series on how I study now that I'm in my clerkship or clinical rotation portion of med school. So look forward to that. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.